Hello, and welcome to Talk Thursday. I'm Maria Ressa. Today, we speak with a man who's made peace his goal and pursued it against all odds. Some would call his journey from a hardliner to power sharing. He was the first leader of the Ulster Unionists to negotiate with Sinn Féin. He spent 15 years in the House of Commons of Britain. In 2006, he was raised to the House of Lords. In 1998, he won the Nobel Peace Prize, sharing it with John Hume for their role in the Northern Ireland peace process. Please welcome the Right Honorable Lord David Trimble. He is in the Philippines at a critical juncture, shortly after the signing of a historic framework agreement for peace with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Um, t what are you doing in the Philippines now? I'm coming to find out about the Philippines. It's the first time I've been here. As you say, by, uh, this wasn't exactly uh, planned uh, to, that, to have me coming just uh, a few weeks after the, the signing of the agreement, but it's a marvelous, from my point of view, it's a marvelous time to be here. And we've had some really good uh, meetings yesterday and today, and I'm looking forward to going down to uh, uh, Mindanao at, at the weekend. Do you see any similarities from what you went through, a peace process you led, to what we're going through here in the Philippines? Now? There are similarities, there are also dissimilarities. Uh, and uh, one, you know, uh, there are some parallels, but there are also some things that are really very different. Okay. Um, in terms of Northern Ireland, um, it took 30 years before you signed the agreement. What were the challenges that you had to hurdle to get to that, to get to peace? Well, there was, as you say, it was a long time before we had the right conjunction of circumstances and persons to, 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 to get to uh, the, the agreement that we had in 1998. And, uh, you know, my predecessors, I became leader of the party in 1995. Yes. Some of them tried very hard to, to, to get agreements and, and to, to see a way through to settlement uh, of the matter. Uh, in some respects, I was very fortunate to come to the leadership at a time when, when the circumstances were beginning to come together in a way that made an agreement possible. What, what parts were similar to the Philippines? In oh, well, the fact that you've got <coughs> a, a terrorist situation. Yeah. Uh, where is in itself is, is that, and then you've got religious elements involved. Correct. Uh, you've also got uh, a, you know one of the sort of substratum of the situation here is because of the the, the Moro areas being uh, on as it were a, 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 a juncture with other countries and with similar with, which have similar social structures and, and, and religious affiliation. There's while there's not an overt suggestion of secession, it's it's there, it's there. and. And secession was one of the significant factors in our situation as well. Right. And of course, when you're looking about uh, forming the, 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 this uh, framework agreement, looks forward <coughs> to recreating a, uh, a, or a, a, a local regional administration. That's, of course, what we did. And then some of the continuing issues with regard to uh, continuing uh, paramilitary activity, handling the weapons issue, and all that sort of thing. Again, there are there are similar issues, right. but the, the factual context is, is different. Right. In terms of the broad issues that seem that seem similar, at least to me, you mentioned constitutional issues that you had to deal with, mm -hmm. and then the social issues to deal with, uh, with getting people to peace, giving them development. Um, I guess, how did you hurdle those two processes? Well, actually, the, the, the second set of issues, we were fortunate in that while Northern Ireland uh, historically had always been the, the poorest part of the United Kingdom uh, and had had a really bad time during the recessions in, in the 1970s and things began to improve a bit in, in the 80s, actually in the early 1990s our local economy started to grow mm -hmm. initially growing well grow, for a number of years growing at twice the uk average uh, and the prosperity was growing before the agreement in fact it, it facilitated the, the agreement, agreement. Uh, because a lot of people were feeling you know we're doing well but right. we could do even better if we if weren't held peace. back by political instability and violence yes and so the the fact that things were starting to get better uh, and people could then say, well, we could really improve upon this. That, that was more of an incentive than, than the years when, when, when things were really bad economically. Yes. Well, th this is similar to the Philippines. These parts of the Philippines are among the poorest in, mm -hmm. in the country. Um, in terms of, of dealing with 
uh, getting rid of arms afterwards. That would seem to be a sticking point in Northern Ireland. Do you ex how did you get through that time period? Well, while the f focus of attention was on the decommissioning of weapons, but in fact behind that stood a bigger, more important issue. And the, the big issue was whether the various groups that had previously been involved in violence uh, were going to give up violence permanently for good and commit themselves to democratic, peaceful means of pursuing their objectives. That was the big issue. Uh, decommissioning of weapons was almost as were selected as an, a, a litmus test of the, of the other. But in fact, the, the, the important issue, and I think in this context here, yes. the important issue is whether there is a commitment to move away from violence towards peaceful democratic means. And I think the, the parties here, uh, and I'm thinking particularly of MILF, uh, what it should, I think, put, uh, the question it should ask itself, what do we need to do to cr generate confidence in other people that we have, are definitely changing and are definitely moving away from this? Yeah, weapons are still an important issue, right. uh, and, and, and Ill illegal weapons are an important issue, and, and one should have some means of taking care of that, if only to ensure that they don't fall into the wrong hands. Correct. You know? uh, but the big issue is showing that and showing, demonstrating that you are committed to peace and democracy and building up confidence amongst other parties and, and the public generally that that is the case. What we have here is a smaller and smaller splinter group. So we actually had from, from the Moro National Liberation Front coming down to where we are today, we had a, huge, a large Moro group that then signed a peace agreement in 1996 and then now we have a framework agreement with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Um, but there are still smaller groups. I mean, did you run into any problems like that where you dealt with the main group, the IRA, and they, and they agreed with you, but you still had violence coming from splinter groups? Uh, yes, we do. We, have, uh, we use the term dissident Republicans to refer to uh, people who, some of them former members of the IRA, some of them from uh, other organizations. We call them which, rogue members here, but well, yeah, well, yeah, whatever, yeah, former members. Uh, it's just, uh, and we still have a problem. I mean, there was a murder committed uh, last week by uh, dissident Republicans in, in Northern Ireland. But while they are capable of you know, uh, actions such as that, they don't have any significant support in the community. Yes. And uh, whatever difficulties we have in the short term, long term, they don't have a future. Uh, of that, absolutely no doubt. And so we, 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 you know, we, the society as a whole can cope with that. It's not a big problem, uh, although obviously the fact that they can, uh, uh, you know, commit acts which may cause damage or even uh, take life, as, as, as has happened in a couple of cases. Uh, as I say, uh, th that is not going to threaten the process. Fantastic. What One of our sticking points, and, and both uh, the MILF and the Philippine government said that one of the things that almost derailed the signing of this agreement was a clause on policing powers. Um, so again, it goes, comes down to if you have a group that uses, continues to use violence. Who controls the area? Um, did the IRA, how did you negotiate this with the IRA? Well, what we did, uh, obviously the, we, there was going to have to be changes on the policing front because uh, our police had been in the front line in dealing with terrorism. Yes. Uh, and so the, the police force uh, was itself a heavily armed force. Uh, that was focused on, uh, you know, countering terrorism and, and getting on top of the terrorist organisations. With the bulk of the terrorist organisations giving up violence, then they would have to reorientate themselves towards normal policing, right. uh, a community approach. Uh, they wouldn't need the same number, so they're going to have to downsize and, as I say, reorientate themselves towards normal policing work. So that was a big challenge. Right. Added to which. Uh, we wanted to ensure that the police force now uh, more fully reflected society in Northern Ireland. There had always been a significant number of, of Catholics who had joined the police force, yes. but we wanted that number boosted to closer to something closer to their proportion of the population as a whole. So we had the uh, re reorientating necessary of moving away from terrorism to normal policing. Right. Uh, 
downsizing and at the same time recruiting. Right. So we had to, uh, as it were, have incentives uh, for, for people to take early retirement, which would get the downsizing down below the number we needed in order then to bring that up by bringing you didn't in fresh You were people. just recruiting the Catholics, but you didn't necessarily recruit former fighters for the RI, IRA. No, we, we, we operated the normal standards with regard to recruiting the police. I, I'm sure that we have people who were sympathetic to the, the Republican uh, movement, yeah. people who voted for Sinn Féin, for example, uh, but people who were known to be involved in, 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 in criminal acts, no. We, we, we maintained the normal standards in terms of recruitment. When you were going through this process, what were the biggest challenges that you faced? The biggest challenges we faced actually were internally within my own party and within our, our electorate. Mm. Uh, we had considerable difficulties internally, but in fact the bulk of the party structures and membership uh, remained faithful to the process and, and in fact are very proud of the fact that they, they, they carried this through. With the electorate, we were fine until we, we ran into two problems which resulted from continuing criminal activity by the IRA, by the Republican movement, who although they had endorsed the agreement and had the advantage of the, uh, the new administration where their electoral strength gave them representation ministerially, so they took ministerial office, they still continued to engage in paramilitary activity and the, the electorate, uh, uh, the, the unionist electorate, wanted to send them, the, the, the weakness in terms of governmentally was actually in London, uh, but the only way they could send a message to Tony Blair was to vote against me, which they did. Uh, and so uh, at the, in 2005, yes. I, I came out of the Commons because they, 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 we, we, I simply I lost my seat, you know. And the, my party did very badly in that election. But there you are, these things happen in life.